Okay, so now we'll talk about the receptive fields uh, and about the threshold of the receptor. Uh, I will add, uh, uh, use some videos from the YouTube, uh, yeah, generally. So first uh, video would be receptive fee by Judith Hunter, you can find it on the YouTube. Uh, and, as, and I will stop uh, from time to time and add something. Receptive field, I'm going to orient you to the diagram. Here's a cross section of half the spinal cord with the primary afferent labeled. and So the primary afferent nerve, obviously, she means. The second order or dorsal horn neuron labeled. For the purpose today, I'm going to picture the primary afferent in a little more detail, as well as the second order neuron pictured here in more detail. As you know, the primary afferent is a pseudo-unipolar neuron with the central process synapsing in the dorsal horn on second order neuron. Okay, of course it's a bit uh, complex, but generally what's the idea about this place? Uh, here, it's about uh, how the information from the sensory receptors is reaching the brain. Uh, she is showing us the spinal cord uh, because to the spinal cord and through the, through the spinal cord to the brain, this information from our senses, uh, for example, touch sense in the skin of the fingers, for example, uh, needs to reach us. Yes, so it reaches us through the nerves, through the spinal cord to the brain. Uh, there are a couple pathways, you already know something about this. However, it needs to get through the sensory neurons. Yes, so you have the uh, central second order neuron and primary afferent neuron, yes? Uh, they are connected. This is important also to understand the receptive fields. That's why she is explaining uh, it now. Neurons and the peripheral process ending in receptors. Receptive field can be hard to grasp, but here's a diagram to show a primary afferent and the tissue from which it receives sensory information is considered the receptive field of that primary afferent. Now let's so one more time, this primary afferent can uh, get the information from some area of the body. Yes? Generally, uh, just to simplify it for now, let's consider the recept touch receptors on the skin. So uh, those would be receptors of touch. Yes. So. Uh, they will feel the mechanical stimuli of touch from some small area of the skin. Draw a second primary afferent and its receptive field, and a third primary afferent and its receptive field. Now the numbers here are arbitrary, but let's have those three. So here we have the important concept. Yes, so we have three uh, receptors generally that has some very strict. A very strict sorry area from which they collect the uh, the information yes from which they can tell whether there was touch or not yes uh, look uh, primary afferents synapsing on a dorsal horn neuron a second order neuron now the receptive field of that second order neuron will be the sum of the receptive fields of the three neurons Exactly. So the second order neuron would collect all the information from those three. And this is important because you need to uh, think whether uh, it would be better uh, when there are a lot of the uh, sensory neurons that are connected to the second, or second order neuron or it is better when there is less of them. Yes? Uh, of course, it's better. Uh, we can have higher ability to discern uh, two things as a separate things if we have more of the second order neurons yes so if we have the best the best uh, resolution of our senses if you can say it so the best ability of the two point discrimination for example so our senses are the best when there is one to one so one um, sensory neuron uh, to the secondary order neuron. The more of the uh, sensor neurons are connected to second order neuron, the less uh, visual, the less of the resolution, yes, 
of the senses there would be. Because we lose all of this information. When the information would get through the second order neuron, it would not know from which of the primary uh, sensory neurons the information came. Yes, It would only know that from some of those uh, three, in this case, neurons, the information went. Yes, that some of those neurons were activated, but would have no idea which one. So some information got lost. If we would have three second order neurons, each attached to one of the primary sensory neurons, the brain would know exactly which primary sensory neurons, so which part of the skin was touched. Yes. So the more of the primary sensory neurons attached to the single second order neuron, the more of the information is lost. It pictured here that synapse on that dorsal horde neuron. So that is the receptive field of the second order neuron. Okay. Uh, okay, and okay, and second part. What uh, is the threshold of the receptor? Uh, okay, so the threshold of the receptor is how strong uh, the the input must be. So how strong the stimuli must be uh, to invoke the reaction of the receptor. You already know that each receptor. Uh, is sensitive to some kind of the stimuli. Yes, it may be light, it may be sound, uh, it may be some chemical substance like a ligands, like a hormone. But there needs to be some strength of those stimuli. So, for example, what is the strength of this stimuli? For example, in case of the light, it's uh, more intensive light. Yes, lighter. In case of the sound, is uh, the more uh, the stronger input, stronger stimuli would be louder sound, yes? In case of the touch, stronger touch, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, and in case of the substance, because it may substance, uh, so chemical substance, the concentration of the substance, whether the concentration would be high or low. And now, different receptors would respond to different kinds of the stimuli, we already know this, but also would have different threshold. So, for example, we have different mechanoreceptors. The next question would be about this. That would be activated in different points. Yes. So, for example, the low threshold receptors like this, this is a string of receptors here, would be activated when the stimuli is low. Yes. So, even a very weak stimuli would activate. Uh, like, mm, for example, the Pacinian body also have relatively low, maybe not so much, but oh, never mind. Uh, and we have some high threshold, uh, like the Golgi receptors, for example, that needs very, very strong stimuli to be activated. So one more time, the low threshold receptors are receptors that would be activated even by the very, very small uh, stimuli. The high threshold receptors would be activated only when the stimuli is very high strong. So if we want to collect as much of the information as possible, like in case for, for our vision or our, uh, our hearing, we generally like better the low threshold receptors. But in some cases, uh, we need also the high threshold receptors. Uh, like for example, if you want to activate them only in case of the really big and potentially harmful uh, stimuli like is in the case uh, of the Golgi receptors. Okay, I suppose it's quite clear. Uh, oh, next question. Next question, tell me what are the types of the mechanoreceptors in the skin? Yes, what are the types of the mechanoreceptors and what are the differences between them? This is your next question. Mechanoreceptors in the skin and differences between those mechanoreceptors. Okay, thank you.